MR2 Meet Turbo. What is up engine heads? As you can see from the video title, today we will be taking a turbo out of a box. But of course we will be doing more than that because we will be taking a detailed look at this particular turbocharger and I will tell you my opinion about budget turbos because that's what this really is. A very very affordable budget turbo. Also I will be talking about the plans for my upcoming Toyota MR2 Mark 1 turbo build using a Toyota 4A FE engine and I will explain how this turbo fits into those plans. But first things first, let's get the turbo out of the box. So here we have our turbo. It was fairly well packaged and received zero damage during shipping. Although when it comes to the packaging, I have to say that my max beating rods, connecting rods, uh, were packaged better. So here we have the turbo and inside we have some more protective foaming and that's basically the box. And as you can see in the box, this is a GT28. It basically has the exact same specs as a Garrett GT28 Turbo minus uh, some things which I will cover in the video. So let's get the nylon out of the way. There's some paper protecting this cast iron side, the hot side, and we also have some gaskets. What's nice is that we do have some protection for the turbo internals too. Okay, that's everything out of the way. So here we have our turbo and I'll be honest with you, first impressions are really good. The castings look really nice. There's nothing wrong with either the hot or the cold side. There's no weird, concerning, disgusting casting flash anywhere that I can see it. The machining looks pretty nice as well, very tidy, very decent. Uh, there's no rough, sharp edges anywhere. The threads for the bolts look very clean too. Nothing weird in there either. There's also signs of quality control as well. Um, there's paint markings on both the turbine wheel and the compressor wheel too. Paint markings on all the bolts, on the housings too, so yeah. Definitely very nice. Uh, this is actually a $120 turbo and for $120 this is beyond impressive. Now before I actually got this turbo I watched a YouTube video about it. A video from a channel called JK Fab. I'm gonna put up links uh, in the suggested videos and in the description to the video so you can watch it too. I want to thank JK Fab for making that video because it's a really useful very informative video. The dude took a turbo just like this one from Max Speeding Rods apart and gave his very honest opinion about the turbo. On top of this he added some real value by taking the turbo to a turbo balancing machine to check the balance of the turbo and although many turbos actually failed the test on that machine this one passed. It was properly balanced and for me this was very reassuring that Max Speeding Rods did things right with this turbo for $120, which is really nice and really impressive. If your turbo isn't balanced properly, it definitely isn't going to last a very long time. You can tell it's been balanced by looking at the compressor and the turbine wheel. As you can see, material has been removed from both to get them perfectly balanced. Uh, this is the same thing as you can see in your crankshaft. There are dimples in your crankshaft where material is removed during the balancing process to get your crankshaft dynamically balanced. A very similar thing is done to your turbocharger to ensure perfect balance. Now a lot of people will tell you that you shouldn't buy budget turbos, that they possibly can't be any good for this amount of money, that you're wasting your time and that you should fork out the money for an actual famous brand name high quality turbocharger like Garrett for example. Now Garrett is a good example because this thing is meant to replicate a Garrett. The Garrett GT 2871R in fact and this thing does match that Garrett turbo in many of its specs. Just like the Garrett this thing is oil cooled and water cooled. It also has the same AR and it has the same specs for the compressor wheel and the turbine wheel but unlike the Garrett this is a journal bearing. The Garrett is a ball bearing and there's a few other small things but the Garrett is better. Of course it's going to be better. It's 10 times more expensive. This is $120 and the Garrett is $1,000 to $1,500 depending on where you look and where you live on planet Earth. So 
you can actually buy 10 of these for the price of a single Garrett GT 2871R. But the real question is, the important question is, if the Garrett is 10 times more expensive, is it 10 times better? Well, I'll be honest with you, there's no way uh, a turbo with the same specs, doesn't matter how well it's made, how what kind of materials it uses, it cannot be 10 times better. It, it cannot make 10 times more boost. It cannot live 10 times longer. It cannot do anything 10 times more than this turbo. So in theory, if this turbo was, let's say, twice as bad as the Garrett, it's still a steal because it only costs one tenth of what the Garrett costs. So it's a great thing, right? I also don't think it's even twice as bad. I think this thing is, let's say, 20 to 30, 35% worse than the Garrett. I'm estimating things here, so there really is no way to measure percentage of turbo worseness. But you get what I'm trying to say. So we car enthusiasts should be grateful for this thing because it gives you the opportunity to get a turbocharger for the price of a slightly fancy dinner for two. And between dinner and turbo, I'm gonna choose turbo. Now, that's all nice and good, but here's my actual opinion. And here's where I think that these things actually come in place and this is why I think they're great for. They're great for making references. Let me elaborate on that. This isn't going to be the final turbo for my engine. Uh, and I'll explain why. Choosing a turbocharger for your engine is a very difficult task. Uh, choosing the right turbo, the right specs for your particular engine is hard because you have to take many different things into account. And although you can do a lot of calculations and estimations and there's a lot of tools to do that, uh, getting it right is sort of easy in theory. But getting it right in practice is a lot harder because a turbo that can seem great for an engine uh, on paper in practice might not feel good to you. You might not be satisfied with it in real world conditions. And we all want power and nobody wants turbo lag and we're always compromising between these two because a big turbo with big turbo potential with big power potential is always gonna have more lag. So you always gotta choose between the two and getting the balance right is hard. And this is where these things come into place and I think they're, they're really, really good for this. They're really amazing, really useful because they give enthusiasts the opportunity to not spend a lot of money and test turbos with a particular spec on their engine. For example, this is a pretty big turbo for a 1.6 liter engine that I'm going to be using. And I'm just likely, likely this thing is going to have quite a bit of lag. It might be spooling at around 4,500 RPM, maybe 4,000, maybe even 5,000. We'll see, it depends on the tune, the exhaust manifold, a million things. But you really won't have any sure way to tell how a particular turbo size and spec sheet performs on your engine until you actually install it, tune the engine and take it for a drive. And this thing lets you do that for the price of a slightly fancy dinner for two. And that's a lot of better if you that's a lot better than buying the actual Garrett. Because let's say I want to try this turbo out, I install it on my engine, and I don't like it. There's too much lag, it makes a lot of power, but it sucks for driving, you know, through curvy canyon roads because a mid-engine car from the 80s, uh, an ancient chassis that makes a lot of power at 5000 RPM is a bit of a death trap. So I don't like it. I spent $120 for that experiment and now I know that for example this is a turbo that's too big for my engine. As opposed to me buying the Garrett for $1,000 something, dollars, not liking it and then having to sell it for half the price because I installed it on my engine and now it's a used turbo. Do you see what I'm trying to say? $120 selling a Garrett for half the price I lost 500, 600, 700 dollars. As I said, we car enthusiasts should be grateful for these things because they're amazing for getting the reference point for your engine. You know, once you test it, whether you should go bigger or whether you should go smaller.
So this is my plan. I'm gonna start out with a turbo that's on the big side and if I like it, I'm gonna keep it, have fun with it. And if I don't like it, I'm gonna replace it with a smaller turbo. Uh, we're gonna see what this thing can achieve, whether uh, it can get me to the desired 300 horsepower with my 1.6 liter 4 FE engine. I'm not sure, we're gonna see. Uh, if I do like this particular turbocharger, once I have fun with it, once I thoroughly test it and abuse it, so I have data on how good these budget turbos actually are, we're gonna give them a lot of boost, we're gonna see how they perform, how they handle boost. Once I do that, if I do like this turbo size, I'm gonna replace this thing with an actual Garrett. Once I'm ready for a bit more boost, a bit more power, a bit faster spool, the Garrett's gonna come in. And if I do that, it's gonna be really fun to see how an actual Garrett compares to this thing. I honestly think this is a fairly nice turbo. I think at a low boost, around 12 to 13 uh, PSI, this thing can live all day long. It's even gonna be durable. It's gonna do a lot of miles. I do not think this thing has any significant issues. It's actually a decent turbo. There's nothing wrong. There's no weird play in the shaft. Honestly, for this kind of money, as I already said a million times, it is a really impressive piece of kit. It gives enthusiasts the opportunity to have fun with boost, to have a learning experience with boost, to boost some random engine, tinker around, be a DIY car guy without risking too much money on your turbo. And then if you wanna take things to the edge, you know, get the turbo whatever is your max speeding rods turbo is based on. Or if you don't like it, then you know it's too big or too small. Now, there also are some things that I don't like about this turbo. Uh, when it comes to the gasket pack, uh, honestly, none of the gaskets look very reassuring to me. Uh, the rubber ones are kind of weird, sort of cardboardy. Maybe they're okay, who knows? Uh, this one doesn't seem to fit right on the holes. Doesn't seem to be centered properly. This one is kind of thin, but it's likely okay. But to be honest, I likely won't be using these gaskets. Uh, there's no reason to get in the engine and fit them and then have to remove them if something leaks. So I'll get some maybe a bit higher end gaskets. But honestly, this is a minor thing. I guess they do gotta save money somewhere. It's a $120 turbo, so getting a few bas gaskets for a few bucks is okay. Also, I just got one banjo bolt in my kit. I think I should have received two. Uh, the one that I got it seems to be too long for one of the holes and too small for the other, so I likely won't be using uh, this banjo bolt either. Um, one thing, one other thing that everybody knows when it comes to these budget turbos is the wastegate. Uh, it's too small. Everybody gets boost creep issues with these turbos. It's a well-known fact now. Uh, now, so before installing this, I will be porting uh, the wastegate hole to make it larger to avoid boost creep, which is again forgivable. It's half an hour, maybe an hour of your time. This is cast iron, so it isn't that easy to port. But with a decent grinder, you can port this hole easily and avoid boost creep with this turbo. One more thing that you should know about this turbo is that it has a 270 degree thrust bearing as opposed to a 360 degree thrust bearing. And this is something I found out by watching that very nice, very useful JK Fab video on this turbo. The thrust bearing means that this turbo likely cannot take a lot of boost for a very long time. And this is why I said that 12 to 13 PSI of boost is totally okay. I think this turbo can handle that all day long. But if you significantly crank up the boost, it will likely shorten the lifespan of this turbo. Uh, but we won't be making assumptions. I will be testing that out. I will be cranking up the boost on this turbo and we will find out exactly how long and how much boost uh, it can handle. So yeah, those are the basics when it comes to this turbo and how it fits into Project Underdog and my plans for the build. Honestly, I think this is a really nice thing. I'm grateful that it exists and that it gives me the opportunity to be able to test out a particular turbo spec before uh, making a large turbo investment. Uh, I'm really looking forward to installing it, to having fun with it. I, I'm actually kind of, I'm more enthusiastic about this thing because just like Project Underdog, this too is an underdog, underdog and I really wanna see how it behaves and what it can do for this incredible price. So yeah, uh, that's it when it comes to today's video. If you do like this turbo, if you wanna get it, if you wanna buy it, have some fun boosting something, uh, in the description, in the pinned comment, you can find the links to this turbo uh, and the Max Speeding Rods website, and also you can find a discount code so you can get this thing uh, even cheaper, which I think is a bit rude. Please don't use the discount code at all. This is 
cheap enough already. Eh, I'm joking. Use the code differently. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, whatever, the comment section is right down there below. And as you know, I read all the comments. I respond to the vast majority uh, of the comments that I get. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Whoa. Yeah, that's what I get for making a makeshift table. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.